Following Raw, PW Insider reported that, quote, Vince McMahon was personally and heavily involved with last night's episode of Monday Night Raw. Per wrestler, uh, per wrestler, PWInsider.com has confirmed with multiple sources. Uh, they continue. Uh, they were told that about 15 to 20 minutes before Raw went live on the air, a number of late rewrites for the episode were ordered, described as not feeling like the type of changes talents and staff had come to expect under Paul Levesque. Changes for the episode continue as the show uh, well into being on the air. We are told they came directly from McMahon, who had his own office at Raw, just as he did before his retirement in the summer of 2020. PW Insider is told that the night started with Paul Levesque on headsets running Raw, but as the taping went on, it was McMahon who was more and more involved as the point person running the show. While McMahon was on headset producing a few times over Mania Weekend, he was at the gorilla position for most of last night's Raw taping, directly overseeing the proceedings. We were told by multiple sources who were at Raw that there was no doubt that Vince was firmly back in charge following the Endeavor acquisition of the company. All right, so let's uh, let's pause there before we get into the Wrestling Observer's comments about things. Uh, certainly, uh, I don't know what Vince's definition of in the weeds is, but, uh, you know, I, I would think that running things is, would be. <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, I know. Being know. there, direct, uh, producing the show, ordering rewrites, that sounds like the very definition of being in the weeds. Like right. on a higher level, it'd be like, Maybe be involved uh, early on in terms of what are, what are we going to have going on on Raw tonight? Well, this is what we're pitching. All right. Broad or main event no strokes, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're trying to bring in a big name for the upcoming pay-per-view. I'm going to wheel and deal uh, and, and and see, you know, what 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 might happen there uh, in the women. I mean, maybe his definition is completely different than ours. Maybe in the weeds is, uh, you know, euphemism for not being involved at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'd be weird. But uh but yeah, you know, it's this is this is the thing, you know, you and I were not sky is falling type guys, you know. No, and we've heard all nature, sorts no. of since, you know, whenever when Vince came back and things like Brock versus Amos happened, we were saying, you know, it, it wouldn't shock us if Vince was uh, part of that, given that he's got a relationship with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar generally uh, is is maybe presented with options, and, and Vince would have something to do with keeping him happy because Brock and Vince are close. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, and, and, and one of our main points was, well, he wasn't there on headsets running stuff. Like, it'd be kind of obvious, obvious if he was because we'd get reports. Well, guess what? Uh, we got the reports. Now. We got the reports, and now. it's not just we got the reports. We see it on our television. You know, well, that's yeah. That's that's the biggest thing too. It's funny because sometimes I see people in you know either our comments or on Twitter or whatever addressing us. Usually it's in the YouTube comments. Yeah, saying oh, what does it matter who's involved? Well, it does matter. Our our job here is to provide you with a critique and analysis of the show. You can't do that without knowing who's involved, who's running things. And when yeah. there's a certain language being told, and on top of that, part of the fun is, okay, where do you think the story's going to go from here? A lot of people want to know, where do you think the story's going to go next? Well, you know what informs that is who's running the damn thing. Yeah, the creative mind behind it, yes. If it's Vince McMahon, generally speaking, uh, we know it's it's probably not going to go any anywhere very interesting. No. Uh, over the past, since SummerSlam with Triple H in charge, there's been a lot of really cool things happening, you know, and as we always specify, it ain't all perfect, but by and large, there's been a lot of cool stuff that's been happening, and it just feels like there's a bit of a breath of fresh air going on with, with the WWE product. And so, yeah, when you when you guys want us to, to analyze and critique the show, we need to be informed with what's going on to a degree yes. behind the scenes and yes. whose vision is playing out in front of us. And the crazy thing about that is that you can actually tell who's running things by watching the show. We didn't know for sure until I would say like I, about 90 minutes in when it just hit me like a ton of bricks. There has been literally no women besides the people in the audience. And like, uh, I don't even know if Samantha was doing the, the ring announcing last no, night. No, it was, it was Kathy Kelly was doing the, the Kathy Kelly doing. was on screen. Yeah. But beyond that, like nobody in the women's division was featured for like literally 90 minutes before Bianca came out. It was two hours. It was actually two hours. Oh, was that two hours? It was was the top of the second hour that Bianca came out for a promo. For me, it was when we went through the whole commercial free first hour and there was only three minutes of wrestling. That's when I was like, oh. Maybe around Amos Elias, I think, is when we started to get catch wind of like, whoa. And then Sean had tweeted out 
the show had categorically changed. Now, what's yeah. funny is that if you look at the run sheet that uh, or the, the 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 format that Sean had put out hours before the show, he always does uh, Fightful Select, which, by the way, Fightful Select are terrific. That report Go came out yeah. about an hour ago or two hours ago or something. And uh, and yeah, we always suggest people go subscribe to Fightful Select. It's really the only sub service you need besides going in Roz, of course. Um, but uh, but the the actual match rundown was not that different. I still get the feeling that we still would have had the Brock Lesnar stuff, which I thought was significant. I, I thought that that was OK. I like that opening segment and I liked the closing bit. I thought those were solid. Um, I thought that the damage control <coughs> live Raquel match was solid. I thought there was some good stuff there. Yeah. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Street Profits was a good match. There were two women's matches uh, cut uh, and it, they were supposed to be triple threat matches uh, that were going to lead to a number one contender. So right Match. now we don't have a yeah. number one contender. Um, and then uh, and then Bailey also is apparently supposed to be ringside for damage control. She posted a tweet saying something like the romance is over. Goodbye. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so who knows what's going on there? Um, it, it's it's all it, it's, you know, and so you could see it. Yeah. On the screen with the amount yeah. of wrestling versus non wrestling, as you but, pointed out. And also not just that also it was. Matches happening or things happening with no real motivation. Yeah, correct. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. For example, you ha I understand Street Profits won the showcase match at WrestleMania. They come out, and say we want a tag title opportunity. I get it. That happens. There's a story you could tell there to lead to that match, but no, match just happens. That's a big match. It's they won the showcase. Match. They're over. I know. Or I know. tease they're former, that they're going to break time, up. Th Three-time champions? Right, yeah. That's a that's a big-time match. Like the Street Profits, they got a big pop when they won at WrestleMania. People love to see them. Yes. They are very over. You put them in a story with these guys. You don't just have them do the job clean right there. No, that's just it's just there's there's no drama. There's no tension there. No. Um, and so it's that. But you know what else it is? There is somebody had pointed out on Twitter uh, during a backstage uh, bit. It was either an interview or, or just a shot of somebody walking. There was a maximum male models, Chad Gable, yeah. Otis bit going on in the background, which is a very Triple H thing. Yeah. I guarantee you that was filmed ahead of time. And they ran that without. Maybe even Vince realizing that was a thing, but that is a Triple H hallmark that yeah. I saw nowhere else. Yeah, Triple H was good at giving us what felt like an open world. It felt mm -hmm. like it was all part of one universe where things would crisscross, and uh, and and that that did not seem the case. It was disjointed. It was boring more it than was anything. Really it was boring it because was they just sapped the drama out of it. Somebody mentioned also on Twitter when uh, Lita, Trish, and Becky came out to do the interview. Becky legitimately looked upset. Like she looked like she had just been probably had a script shoved in her hands because that's another thing. The prompt Bronson reads a uh, little bit with Bobby Lashley was like embarrassingly scripted. It was like, what, why is this guy acting weird talking about students and pupils and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was weird. It was weird. The entire was Seth, the Seth Rollins thing. Yeah. Where he's in the ring. So, yeah, he he's he does an interview with Kathy Kelly backstage. Uh, he says, "I'm gonna go where the real party's at. That's out in the ring." So he goes, and the music plays, and the crowd sings. And we come back from commercial. He's just in the ring for I don't know thirty seconds, maybe a minute. Yeah, and then leaves. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell is this? He just came out to hear the crowd sing a song. Where's the advancement of anything? And then there was some fan video that showed up on 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 social media today that. There's during the commercial break, there looks like producers or, or, or part of the crew production crew there telling him something. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's the way, you know, his body language and motion he's making with his hand. He's like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And he has he's given a mic. But then when they come back from commercial, he's got no mic in his hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Guardian Ape here on your YouTube chat says the whole romancing with Bailey is something she's been doing for weeks now, talking about her wrestling history and romance with it. All right. That could be. That could very well be. Okay. Because from okay. what I understand, she was pulled minutes before, and I think that tweet predated that a little bit. But, you know, so coincidence, perhaps. Yeah, I think, um, the, I think the Bailey tweet was from Monday morning. It was from Monday morning. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, absolutely bizarre. So let's dive into uh, the Wrestling Observer himself, Dave yep. Meltzer. He said this during last night's Wrestling Observer Radio. Dave Meltzer said he was running TV tonight. Talking about Vince. He's back. 
Uh, it's what it was. It will be what it was before. And if people think that was bad, it will be bad. And that's just the way it is. Levesque will be head of creative and will be doing the busy work and all that stuff. Vince is going to have the final say in everything. So we can pause there for a second. We're about to talk about the backstage morale, which not surprisingly yeah. was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so I, what Dave is saying there, I think is probably just a common sense read on the situation as opposed so, to he yes. knows he's been told this is going to happen. Um, I, the big, the big tell will be of course, whether or not Vince actually travels. Cause he was in LA for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. If he's, if he's in Portland for SmackDown on Friday, then yes, then we know he's going to be, he wants to be there in the weeds doing yeah. all this stuff. And what this, what this meant, I have no idea. It's, it's one of several things. It's it's an ego thing. It's a I'm not going anywhere thing. So you guys in the company better get used to it thing, which it probably is the most likely scenario, whether or not that means he's going to be running things every single week. I don't know. Um, and we're going to talk about the ramifications of the backlash that's going on right now yes. in, in a moment here. Uh, let's talk about morale. Uh, backstage morale took a serious hit according to PW Insider said this among some talents we spoke with there was a huge negative shift in morale as they realized that things were going to go back to exactly where they were before Paul Levesque was placed in control as chief content officer one source said the place felt nuked but others didn't go that far. The feeling was that going forward, the likelihood was that McMahon would be overseeing everything again, leaving the creative once again to his whims and sensibilities. Although whether that actually plays out remains to be seen, which again is, is an important caveat there. Yeah. We just don't know if this is going to be a thing again um, yeah. or if it's if, just if, him going back to what he was doing before. Yeah, if it's a situation where we start here and starting Friday with SmackDown that he's traveling, and is backstage at every show, then yes, obviously he's he's taking control yet again. If this is a thing where, well, I'm in weekend, I'm in LA for the weekend, I might as well pop in on Raw and then just t suddenly start running the whole show. Mm -hmm. And then we don't hear about maybe, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a situation where, well, if he's there, he'll do it, but if not, he won't. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It remains to be seen. Friday is going to be a huge tell. I think Friday is going to be a huge tell, but also, man, like you, you can't. This can't be a situation where, or maybe it can, and they'll just figure it out, where Vince will show up, run things one week, be gone for three weeks, because yeah. it's a serialized thing. It's I a serialized show. Things happen that affect the next week and the next week and the next week, as we know from the Kevin Nash whiteboard. Yes. Um, so, like, I, I don't know how that's going to work. I'm, I'll be honest with you. After that Triple H speech, at the beginning, I would not, I was half expecting to wake up today and with news that he had left that maybe, he, you know, if he goes to Ari Emanuel, the head guy at Endeavor and says, uh, hey, look, you know where I am if you want when you're when you're when this falls through, because that's another thing to keep in mind is I understand that Endeavor is the place that kept Dana White after he was seen on video slapping his wife attacking his wife right they yeah. kept him around yeah, and dana white's only punishment was people know that he did it according as according to dana white himself i have to live with being this guy well that doesn't sound that bad um vince mcmahon um is still there after all this stuff came out about him uh they kept him around the caveat is there are still things out there that we know have not been released publicly yet because of the shareholders letter to Vince McMahon telling him to leave us alone from a couple months ago. And it's one thing where it's somebody who isn't going to press charges like Dana White's wife. And that's I, that's terrible to, to understand that. But if somebody is going to bring a legal issue to Vince McMahon over additional stuff, that might force the hand of Endeavor. I'm not optimistic that it would and i honestly it shouldn't get to that what what do you think is more likely to get out of this situation a public backlash and a tanking of the ratings in advance of tv talks yeah or something along more along like the the scandal stuff that that forced him out in the first place or does any of that stuff matter and we just got to deal with it while we deal with it i mean the way the way he addressed in that cnbc interview you know, his legacy, I think the question was framed, like, how do you view your legacy given what's happened the last year? And the way he brushed it off, 
He did. Yeah, totally. You know, he he tried to put, say that you know, oh, I've I've uh, I've made mistakes and I've 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 I can't remember the exact term he used, but he's like, and I've confronted them and I've moved on. No, he hasn't. There's been no consequences for anything he's done. Mm-hmm. He essentially took like an eight month vacation and forced his way back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had to repay seventeen million dollars for the company. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for a billionaire, that's pennies. That's you know, nothing. he has yeah, faced nothing. absolutely zero consequences for anything he has done. Right. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And and I would be hard pressed to believe that if there is more allegations, that he will be. It, he will be forced to accept or face the consequences of those either. I would like to be wrong on that. Mm, yeah, I would l- really like to be wrong on that. It 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 it, it pisses me off when I see people, mm-hmm. rich people, mm-hmm. uh, uh, escape consequences for their actions. And and to see it happen on a regular basis, it's upsetting. And to see Vince get away with stuff, it's upsetting. Yeah. Um, and until I see him actually face some consequences for the stuff he's done, I don't believe it's going to happen. I just mm-hmm. don't. Yeah. Because the evidence suggests it's not. Yeah. And not just in his case. Yeah. Um, no, this happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's rich white guys. They get they. Yeah. They, sorry, rich a- white guys. Yes, they're they, able to do whatever they want, man. Basically. Yeah. Um. And uh, as far as the ratings, I be, wouldn't be surprised. They're like, all right, we need to get to sign this contract, new contract signed now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. ASAP. Yeah. Sooner the better. Because then once they're locked into that, what, four or five year deal, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They got guaranteed revenue streams coming in. Mm -hmm. Vince could do it. Probably thinks I can do what the hell I want. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Blank check. Yep. That's already his attitude. I can do what the hell I want. Yeah. And face zero repercussions from whatever he chooses to do. And until that changes, I have hard pressed to believe that. any consequences will come his way. 